Hey, this is Kirk from the DynamoDB team, and today we are talking about table capacity modes. So let's get going. Table capacity modes are how your table manages and scales read-write operations. It also controls how you're charged for read and write operations. Table capacity modes come in two different flavors, provision capacity mode, the default, and on-demand capacity mode. Provision capacity mode with auto scaling is where you configure the upper and lower boundaries of capacity on the table, and DynamoDB continually monitors your table's CloudWatch metrics. With those metrics, it knows when to add capacity up to the configured ceiling, but will also remove capacity when it's no longer needed down to the lower setting. If your table runs in provision capacity mode, it's best practice to have auto scaling configured. For more information on this critical topic, see the links in the documentation in the description. Provision capacity mode is free tier eligible. This is an excellent way for you to take DynamoDB for a test drive. See the functionality it offers, run your apps for as long as you need, and all without paying just to do an evaluation. This is an example where you really need to set the auto scaling capacity settings very tightly. Another feature is the ability to purchase reserve capacity. You can pre-purchase a specific amount of capacity you will need and therefore pay a lower overall cost for that capacity. The second capacity mode is DynamoDB on-demand capacity mode. In this case, there's no capacity planning, no provisioning, and no reservations. You only pay for the reads and writes that you perform. The key benefits on this is that it eliminates the trade-offs of over-provisioning or under-provisioning what you might need. DynamoDB automatically allocates more capacity as your traffic volume increases to help ensure your workload does not experience throttling. However, throttling can occur if you exceed double your previous peak within 30 minutes. Now let's talk about selecting a capacity mode and which one is right for your table. You may want to use provision capacity mode when you have predictable workloads with traffic having gradual ramps up and downs, workloads with known traffic where you can predict exactly what kind of traffic you're going to have as well as the times where you have monitoring in Amazon CloudWatch tuned for what your table is doing and you know when to add and remove capacity manually. On-demand mode is great for new workloads where I don't know what I'm gonna be using capacity-wise. Maybe I need to run the workload for a while in order to figure out what steady state looks like. Then I have some data in CloudWatch to make a decision. The next example is when I have consistently unpredictable or spiky workloads, where I'm not sure what's gonna happen. And it may be over time that your workload is always unpredictable. I spike up sometimes to 10,000 operations per second, and then five seconds later, I'm back down to five operations per second. Another example is frequently idle workloads. My personal favorite for this is development and test environments. I keep all my dev and test tables in on-demand capacity mode. Therefore, they're not costing me any money outside of storage costs because I'm not putting any operations on them most times. The next example is events with unknown traffic. Let's say marketing comes to you and says, hey, in two days, I need the application to scale up to 100,000 new users. Problem is, how many more operations on the database will that be? So this might be a good time to use on-demand mode and let DynamoDB take care of this for me. Next up is the ability to switch between capacity modes. Have a new application and don't know what your traffic profile will be? Like I mentioned before, you can start out in on-demand capacity mode and figure out what steady state looks like. Then you have some data to go off of and can make an educated decision as to which capacity mode will work best for your workloads. You are not locked into any capacity mode on your tables. Let's say you have a big event coming up, marketing, e-commerce, or maybe new downloadable content for a game coming out. If you normally run in provision capacity mode, you can now switch to on-demand mode for the duration of that big event. When the event is over, you can then switch back to steady state of provision capacity mode. All right, it's demo time. So we're looking right here at the movies table. We're going to look at the capacity settings on this table right now. We're looking at the additional settings. We see that it's on on-demand mode right now, so there really are no settings for it. DynamoDB is taking care of everything for us, but we want to change this over to provision mode real quick. Go to edit, we go to provision mode, and it's going to give us the default settings that come out right out of the box for DynamoDB. Minimum of one, maximum of 10. This is that floor and ceiling that I talked about earlier. And also, so we set a target utilization. What is the utilization we want DynamoDB to use to make sure that we have enough capacity going on? And then there's also the initial provision units that we're going to set when we make this change. One thing to note here is that there is a capacity calculator. Let's say if you had an average size of one kilobytes, 
You can type in your reads per second, writes per second, what level of read consistency you're going to potentially use, write consistency, and it'll kick you out of price here. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that this is not going to be exactly what you're going to use because we have auto scaling on here and DynamoDB is going to be changing our capacity between that floor and that ceiling. We, we might one hour be using 100 operations per second at that cost, and then the next hour we're using three. So DynamoDB will scale this up and down. It's not linear. It's not like adding servers to a database and then you're paying for those servers for all time. DynamoDB will actually remove capacity and therefore save you money based off of metrics that are in CloudWatch. So we're just going to change that and then hit Save Changes. And DynamoDB in the background is now changing this over. This, there is no downtime involved in this changeover. You won't see anything. Your customers won't see anything. DynamoDB is just changing this over to this new billing method in the background. In summary, DynamoDB gives you two options for capacity modes. Choose which is right for your workloads, why it's right for your workloads, and when you might want to switch between the two capacity modes. Thanks to be on the lookout for more core concept videos here and on our Twitter handle at DynamoDB.